today today we will have a uh, long case discussion on carcinoma stomach the case will be presented by dr behrul huda who is a third year junior resident at uh, south eastern railway hospital and uh, today with us will be professor shorab ghosh uh, who is professor of surgical oncology and head at calcutta medical college so behrul you share your screen and present wait at the end of history we have some discussion on the history part then move on to uh, examination and then go for the final discussion okay yes, sir. yes yeah. sir share your screen and present the history yes sir Good morning, sir. Myself, Dr. Behrul Hoda from uh, Central Hospital, South Eastern Railway. I am going to pre uh, present a case of carcinoma stomach. So, a uh, 59-year-old gentleman named Nimai Baske, by occupation senior technician, resident of Santragachi, presented with chief complaint of pain abdomen since last six months, vomiting vomiting since last four months. History of present illness. The patient was apparently well six months ago. Then he complains of pain in epigastric region, which was gradually in onset, localized in epigastric region, non radiating, intermittent in nature, uh, burning nature, mild in severity, aggravated by eating spicy food and reduced by vomiting. And vomiting for last four months. Uh, you, uh, vomiting was usually once a day in the evening initially. Now, since last month, once vomiting, uh, vomiting occurs after every meal. Uh, vomiting is uh, uh, is projectile in nature contains mostly semi digested food particles yellowish in color with offensive rancid uh, rancid smell associated with epigastric pain vomiting is aggravated by in intake of meal and relieved by vomiting vomiting relieved by vomiting she <laughs> don't use that term vomiting when he takes food he has uh, this vomiting Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Induced by the intake of food now. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Induced by the intake of food now. Now, now yeah, yeah. every meal he is having vomiting. That is what you said, right? Yes, sir. yes, sir. yes. Sir. Okay, yes. By vomiting. That sounds strange. Okay, Please. go ahead. Yes, sir. He also complains of sensation of fullness after, uh, after meals, weight loss since last three months, reduced appetite since last four months, early satiety, and anorexia since last three months. There is no history of peptic ulcer disease in the past. There is no history of altered bowel habits, no history of hematosis, hem hematemesis or melina. There is no history of jaundice. Past history. Patient is a known case of hypertension on regular medication. There is no history of any surgery in the past, no history of any major illness in the past. Family history. No similar family in the past. And there is change, no change your slides. Change your slides. Behrul, change your slides. Yeah. Yes, sir. Please change it. Hmm. It's okay. Slide is okay. Okay, sir. Uh, no similar history in the family. There is no similar history of cancer in the past. Personal and social history. Patient is a married, has one, has one child. Both child and wife are healthy. Bladder, bowel, sleep is normal. Appetite is reduced. Takes mixed Indian non veg diet and he takes occasional alcohol and smoking. Belongs to every socioeconomic class. On physical examination, uh, the patient was examined. Wait, 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 wait. wait. We will some points on history part we will discuss. Yes, sir. Go back to the history slide. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir. History slide. Go back. Yeah. Yes, sir. There's one before that, probably. So. We have covered most of the points, but there are some points to be discussed. The chronology is not uh, uh, proper. Yes, sir. Go to the history slide. History slide. Yes, sir. History of present illness. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the, the, the chief complaint was uh, in abdomen and Vomiting since last. Vomit. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, how do you explain this pain? Uh, what, what, you go to the character of the pain. Uh, 
uh, yeah. how do you feel that uh, this pain is because of what sir this pain, uh, this pain is because of mass inside the stomach uh, which is uh, causing stretching of this uh, stomach wall and due to irritation of the uh, uh, mucosa of the tumor due to uh, intake of foods mucosal irritation may not cause pain basically yes. you see it's a dull aching pain non radiating intermittent aggravated by food that means when the distension of stomach is there there is some pain yes sir okay so this yes. is not a classic pain of uh, peptic ulcer disease. disease yes sir is there any periodicity in the pain yeah yes sir sorry sir is is there any periodicity of the pain yes the pain increases during uh, after intake of meals no that no, is no, no. periodicity is different periodicity is something else Periodicity is a change over a period, long period of time, which was classically associated with peptic ulcer in the olden days. Nowadays, even in peptic ulcer, you may not get such a thing because PPI treatment is very frequent. Anyone has any kind of upper GI and abdominal discomfort, they take a PPI. Yes, but sir. classically, in the say 60s or 70s, when there was no PPI, no H2 blocker, only antacids, peptic yes, ulcer pain used to get worse over a period of weeks to months. So that, yes. that is not generally there if the pain is due to some other cause, like a tumor. Yes, sir. Okay. Next. Next slide. Yes, sir. Yeah. Vomiting. You see, you have described the vomiting, and at the same time, you should describe, you said what the vomitus contains. At the same time, you should comment whether there is blood in the vomitus or not. You need not mention separately at the end. He has no hematemesis. When you are describing the vomiting, yes, sir. Uh, you have described the frequency of vomiting. It started yes. once a day and then yes. uh, vomiting has progressed and he has vomiting after almost every meal. Yes. It has projectile and contains semi-digested food. And it is important to mention whether he yes. has any food in the vomitus which is which he has taken maybe six hours earlier. That indicates that uh, there might be a component of Outlet of sure. The vomitus contains food taken the previous day or the previous night. You just mentioned once. Okay. Yes, what sir. do you mean by projectile vomiting? Yes, sir. What do you mean by projectile? projectile. The uh, retching of uh, the uh, occurs means the uh, whole, whole no. of the vomitus. Retching is not projectile vomiting. Projectile is something else. What uh, What is the cause of vomiting in a patient like this? There is an obstruction. Sir, guess and you, you have taken meal. Yes, sir. So, stomach is trying to force the meal to the duodenum. Yes, sir. But that area is obstructed. Yes, sir. So, so why is the vomiting occurring now? Sir, it occurs As now. the food cannot go to the duodenum, what happens yes, to this? So, the food comes out through the, uh, from the another way, that is from the mouth. So, you see, once there is the whole stomach is contracting, there is yes, increase sir. of intergastric pressure. Yes, sir. So that way the food uh, come back in the reverse direction with so the force. So forceful vomiting without any preceding nausea. That is the projectile yeah. vomiting. So you are using these terms. You should know the definition. Yes, sir. So suppose we have to stop here. So elderly male patient yes, sir. Who has got upper abdominal pain and vomiting. What are the possibilities? The other main symptoms. The rest of it is mainly negative. There is nothing else which is very contributed. No, there are a few other features also. Sir, uh, Maybe you can go to the next slide also. Then we'll see. Next yes. slide. Some more symptoms. The next slide. Yes. You you say, what I'm trying to say, next slide, next slide, you should be methodical. Go to the next slide. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, you see, uh, here, here, when you go to the next part, you see, as I, I said, you know, that you have two chip complaints. You have yes, elaborated the two chip complaints. Now yes, is the time that you ask about other GI symptoms. Go very chronologically. Come to the appetite. Yes, he said he has anorexia for three months. Yes, sir. come to weight loss. These two come side by side anorexia, weight loss. Yes, then, sir. once you have described the vomiting, the classic history in such patient is initially patient has some sensation of fullness after meals. That is yes, because sir. of partial obstruction. Yes, and sir. then the, these patients started having vomiting more towards evening because yes, he has sir. taken a breakfast and then taken a lunch, and towards evening he is full, he vomits. Yes, when sir. the obstruction is progressing, you have mentioned that the yes, vomiting comes after every meal. Okay, yes, so that yes. is the chronology of vomiting. Next is you should not take bowel habit to personal history here. 
this patient yes. who has got a suspected carcinoma stomach, yes, you should sir. also have some other symptom which comes side by side. Any abdominal distension. Patient yes, uh, with a gastric out of obstruction may have a sensation of fullness in the abdomen and he often can say that he has a rolling mass in the abdomen which is moving yes, from left to right. Sensation of something moving inside the abdomen, especially yes, after sir. meals, after taking Meal. food. So, this, is that history present? That is very important. You have to mention okay. that. And then at the same go, you mention about any uh, change in bowel habit, how many yes, times sir. he is passing stool. Most of these patients are constipated. Why? Sir, Most of to... the patients of outer obstructions are constipated. Why? Sir, due to dehydration, due to... Yes, uh, he is vomiting. He is yes, taking sir. food and every meal he is vomiting. So yes, that sir. is the reason that he has dehydration, he has no food residue in the GIT. Most of the people are constipated. So don't equate that he might have a CA colon in that. That comes up when you have other uh, chronic symptoms. Yes, sir, actually, and then, I would, have, I would yeah. have asked that as a separate question. So, at this point of time, okay. what are you thinking? So, these are the features. You have mentioned reduced appetite and anorexia. I think they are the same thing, isn't it? What is anorexia? Yes. It's the same uh -huh. thing. Same thing. Oh, yes. Yes. Exactly. Reduced appetite for four months, anorexia for three months. No, no, no. no. Say these are two the same. Yes, yes. So, so, patient, elderly, male, upper abdominal pain, vomiting, more after meals, Loss of weight, loss of appetite. Yes. What are the possibilities? Sir, as in this case, the patient is a 59-year-old male mm -hmm. with history of uh, history of fullness of stomach and vomiting after meals. With mm -hmm. He also gives a history of anorexia and early society with history of weight loss. This seems to be a case of uh, carcinoma stomach or uh, due to, uh, due to uh, gastric uh, 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 gastric outlet obstructive disease due to a carcinoma stomach most likely okay would you like to offer me some more differential diagnosis sir uh, this can be due to also a chronic duodenal ulcer or due to a duodenal ulcer no that is not a good dd or due to a... you have said so many things which are not generally duodenal ulcer patients how what is the relationship of abdominal pain and Meals in duodenal ulcer. Yes, you say this. Is the food, uh, is the pain weight loss, the pain? weight loss, anorexia. These are not common symptoms of uh, peptic ulcer disease. You tell me, does the pain get relieved by meals, or does the pain get exacerbated by meals in duodenal ulcer? Classically, sir, in duodenal ulcer, pain gets uh, relieved by meal. So then the patient yes. of duodenal ulcer realizes that that when he stays fasting, he yes, feels sir. pain. When he eats something, the pain is relieved. So, generally, yes. duodenal ulcer patients will not have weight loss. They will not have reduced appetite. They will eat. They will eat a biscuit. They will eat a banana. Yes, sir. So, do, you cannot put duodenal ulcer as a second DD. So, again, you start by saying it's a case of CA stomach. I don't like that. In the, in the exam, you will not get a case yes, of sir. CA stomach. You may get a patient with some abdominal symptoms. So, keep yes, your sir. mind open. Give me another DD. If you cannot give it, then I will ask you. Then you tell me why it is not what I am saying. Will you give well, me another DT? Uh, sir, it can be due to external uh, uh, external compression by a tumor in the head of pancreas. Ah, now you are talking. So, I say this is a CA head pancreas. Why yes. is it not a CA head pancreas? You tell me. Sir, in this patient, there is no history of uh, jaundice present. Okay, very good. That is one feature. So, that is against pancreas and more in favor of stomach. Anything else? And C uh, C head of pancreas occurs most uh, more aggressive aggressively. So no, no, I mean, you have described the pain. You have described the pain. Do you think a C a pancreas pain will have a different character? Some kind it's of mostly pain is gone. But once referral, once the pain yes, is there, C a yes. pancreas may have no pain. That is one part. Pain radiates if to the, the back. Has pain. The How do you feel the pain pancreas, will be? Sir. Yes, and. and uh, it's also dull uh, aching in nature. Uh -huh. Radiation referral? Towards the back, sir. Mm, is it yes. there in this case? No, it, it's not present in this case, sir. Okay. Will he complain of uh, the, something moving from left to right? Uh, in C head of pancreas, uh, there is no movement of something moving from left to right. Okay. Any other DD? Any other DD? Keep your uh, mind open. Don't say it is CS term. Yes, sir. Mm, it, it can be due to a uh, uh, enlarged lymph node mass in the um, portal region compressing okay, the okay due to any other uh, tumor like infected 
Anything else? Yeah. That is basically gastric outlet obstruction due to some lymph nodal obstruction. Anything else? Something to uh, 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 Due to gastrointestinal stromal tumor or lymphoma. Of the... The same thing, gastric outlet obstruction due to a gastric tumor, whether it is malignancy or J story, yeah, that is a histological type. Anything else? Forget stomach. I say this is a CA transversal. Due to mass in the transverse. Yes, yes, sir, yes. Sir. Due to mass in the transverse. So, keep causing... your mind open. Think about possibilities. This is not yes. CA stomach yet. This yes, is sir. just an upper abdominal pain in an elderly male with weight loss and loss of appetite. That is all you have got. Keep your yes, mind sir. open. So it yes, can sir. also be CA colon. Yes, sir. But now you can say uh, there are some features which are more in favor of stomach, some features which are less in favor of colon. That is a different thing. Yes, sir. So you should keep. Go to, Nick, go to the next slide, please. Yes, sir. So these are important. So there is no, no fresh bleeding PR. You should mention that also as a negative history. That will go against the feature of colon. Otherwise, colon. colonic mass can also have weight loss. It can also have constipation. If there is a lot of obstruction or subacute obstruction, patient may occasionally complain of vomiting after meals in a yes. left colonic growth or a transverse colonic growth. Sometimes there may be obstruction. Hmm. Yes, sir. But there is no altered bowel habit. Hmm. Okay, what else? Sorry, sir. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, next. Next, okay. next. Next. Yes, sir. No history of surgery. Why do you ask for history of surgeries in the past? How is it important? Sir, so in previous abdominal surgeries, uh, there is a high chance of uh, adhesions leading to abdominal ob obstruction. Okay, so but which can cause a patient, uh, of, yeah. patient of adhesive yeah. obstruction. Will he have he or she have so much of weight loss, loss of appetite? No, no. So, and but in previously yeah, operated, pain. and in previously op operated case of carcinoma stomach, uh, there is a high chance of recurrence. No, no. So, that, then it will be a different scenario altogether. Any surgery in the stomach is important for patient who might develop malignancy in long yeah. follow-up. Later, is there any role? Any, any, any gastric uh, surgery? Yes, sir. In cases of uh, in which uh, we have heard of, we have heard of surgery for peptic ulcer disease. Yes, sir. Yes, in the sir, stomach. Yes, sir. And these are the patient. These are the these are the post-op patient who are in the risk of developing CS stomach in long follow-up. Why? Yes. Um, because of truncal vagotomy, there is a... What? Yes. What happened? Truncal vagotomy results in what? Acid secretion... Acrode idea. Uh, Acrode acid... idea. A a clarity. Yes, acid secretion is decreased. And what uh... else? You are doing a GJ. What yes, may sir. happen in the stomach? What may reflux into the stomach? Uh, the contents of um, bile may reflux into the stomach. Yes. yes. Uh... And the so patient may have bilateral gastritis, patient may have acrobal idea. And yes, one sir. of the factors for CS stomach is said to be uh, an acidity. Yes, sir. That's okay, so you should. Yeah. Specific history. Any surgery in the past is not important. Whether any surgery yes, in the past, you say there is no peptic ulcer disease in the past. So I don't think patient will have any surgery in the stomach. That is okay. But uh, these are all specific questions. Okay, so next okay. slide, please. Next slide. Yes, next. Why are you asking for family history? Sir, uh, in uh, in some cases like familial uh, and family adenomatous adum polyposis, there is a high chance of... Okay, carcinoma. very good. Yes, there is a... That is generally duodenal. After after colon, the next most common site is duodenum. But okay, duodenum can be like gastric CA. Anything else? Um, and in... Yes, sir. That should be the all. That is all. Yeah. There is no, there is no yeah. familial gastric yeah. cancer variant. No. Yes, sir. Is there a variant of familial gastric cancer? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is a variant of. Uh, what, is that, what is that called? Sorry, Hereditary, sir. hereditary diffuse uh, gastric, gastric cancer. cancer syndrome. So, yes, what sir. is the transmission pattern? Yes. Autosomal dominant. Yes, good. Autosomal dominant. Yes. What is the incidence like? So, say, uh, like, uh, say, breast cancer, is it almost 5% of all gastric cancers? Or is it less or is it more? It is less, only around 2%. No? It is quite uncommon. But since you are mentioning it, and now you are a postgraduate student, yeah. so you should at least know that there is an entity. Yes. So, it is perfectly justified for you to ask yes. about the history. But then you have to say why you are asking for it. 
So FAP, you said yes, that is also important. And yes, hereditary diffuse gastric yes, cancer is yes, a hereditary familial uh, gastric cancer syndrome. So the patient may have it. How do you know? Yes. Uh, go to the next slide, please. And what? What other cancer? Breaking up. Is it my? Is it my network or is it a problem? Yeah. Is everyone hearing sir's voice clearly? No, sir, I, like I cannot hear sir's voice. I don't know. I am also not able to hear. Ah, say the problem from your side, sir. Mahondar voice ta katche. I am doctor bache. Mahondar voice ta sutti katche. Transmission a problem hoche. Acha acha, dekhi. What I am asking is. Uh, do we have do we have any other cancer in the family uh, which has got uh, relation to gastric cancers? I mean, other related malignancies. Yes, yes, that is also an important question. HDC, in fact, hereditary diffuse gastric cancer syndrome has other uh, manifestations also. You know? Uh, yes, sir. It can also present uh, with uh, carcinoma of ovaries. Breast. 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 But, yes, sir. Carcinoma breast. Okay. Yeah. Then Lynch syndrome. Breast or rectal malignancies. Okay. Yes, sir. So all yeah. these things. Okay. Pass on to the examination. Thanks. Okay. Very good. Pass on to the examination. Thanks. Yes. Sir. So, oh, I have examined the patient in a uh, well lit room after taking proper consent. The patient at the time of examination was. Alert, conscious, cooperative, oriented, oriented to time, place, person. There's a decubitus of choice present. Fish is normal. Gait was normal. Average build. BMI of 17 kg per meter square. Uh, mildly dehydrated with poor nutrition. Mild pallor present. There is no sinusitis clubbing, jaundice, or edema. Having pulse rate of 86 per minute. Uh, blood pressure of 110 uh, by 70 millimeter of mercury. With a respiratory rate, a rate of 16 per minute. Temperature uh, temperature was normal. There was no ingots, neck pains, no any obvious pigment uh, deformity, no pigmentation. There is no palpable lymph nodes present. On uh, local examination, on inspection, abdominal abdomen is normal in shape with epigastric fullness. Umbilicus is centrally, pla uh, centrally placed and inverted. Visible peristaltic is in upper abdomen, moving from left to right. There is no skin scar, no pigmentation. All coordinates moving equally with respiration. Hernial orifices were normal, external genitalia were normal. On palpation, temperature was normal. Mild tetanus in the epigastric region was present. A 3 to 3 uh, centimeter swelling in the epigastric region was uh, palpated, which was globular in shape, having smooth uh, surface. Margins were regular, firm in consistency, freely mobile, not fixed to underlying structure. Skin was uh, normal over the swelling. There is no uh, pulsation felt. Liver and spleen are not uh, palpable. On Hello, now we lost you. Sir, can you hear him? Behrul, you can see your screen, but not audible. Behrul? Uh, uh. Behrul, you can hear us? Behrul, uh, we can see you. He is locked out. He'll join. Any day problem. <laughs> mm. No join Kurumunachi or log out Kurusi. Mahanda, I can hear you. I can see Shourav also. No, but yes, the speaker is not there. But I can I can I can hear the speaker. He is coming back. He has come back. He has come back. I think there is some problem in transmission. Yeah, yeah. Behrul, yeah, yeah. You unmute. You unmute. Sir. 
yeah yeah yes yeah, yes yeah, so there was problem with the yeah go to palpation palpation yes. slide yes sir Sir, he has not come yet. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. yes. You have described the swelling. Go to the next part. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Am I visible, sir? Yeah, yes, you are visible. Next slide. Yeah, here only. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, hello. Yes, sir. Ah, so the yes. of, can you describe the method of auscult percussion? Since we cannot ask you to demonstrate here, can you describe how you do it? Yes, sir. We have to place uh, our steso uh, stethoscope at the epigastrium, okay. and we have to uh, we have to take a pen or any object, linear object, and we have to start scratching the uh, scratching from the epigastrium to the radially to the uh, outwards, mm -hmm. in and uh, in, uh, in all the direction in in a circumferential direction, starting from the epigastrium, mm -hmm. and and we have to listen the sound where the sound is not heard. That point has uh, is marked, and these uh, and uh, and in, uh, with the interval or dial of clock fashion, this is done, and the mark points are joined, and it's yeah, where okay, it's okay, okay, fine. So uh, you said uh, you said that mobile free free. How have you started? How have you asked there is no free fluid in the abdomen? You comment percussion free fluid. How have you ascertained there is no in the abdomen? What test you have done? Sir, on uh, we, we have to uh, do the percussion and in which we have to uh, means first we have to start percussing from the so what is the test called? What is the test called? Uh, fluid trill and fluid trill is uh, not no, no, no. Fluid still comes in 10 seconds. Yeah. I mean, yes. More of a palpatory fluid. finding. The, so yes. You have to do some percussion. Yeah. That is a palpatory finding. What is the percussive test shifting. for free fluid? It's called as shifting. Shifting dullness. Shifting dullness. Sorry, sir. Shifting dullness. Shifting hmm. dullness. You percuss on either side, find the dark. Yes, one so side. This, will be this is a yes. basic thing. Even an MEBS student will be expected to answer this. The, Confirmatory test for free fluid in the abdomen is shifting dullness test. Visible. You have to mention that and you have to know it and you have to demonstrate it. Please practice. Yes, shifting dullness, you cannot forget. Next. Okay. So there was no shifting dullness. Yes. So this is you, you said this is an epigastric swelling and it is mobile. I said this is the left lobe of the liver. There is a swelling from the left lobe of the liver. Why not? So uh, left lobe of uh, liver swelling will not be mobile. And if it is uh, swelling, it can be slightly. You have, of, you have described a lot of things. You take point from that. Yes, sir. And uh, the swelling is uh, uh, form in consistency, which is. Uh, Again, over. Again, someone's voice is breaking up. What are the margins? What what about the margins? Sorry, sir. I'm not able to hear, sir. What about the margins of the swelling? Uh, the uh, the margin the margin of the swelling were sir uh, 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 regular and it can be upper uh, Yes, sir. The margin of the swelling was uh, uh, upper border of the so swelling. For river mass, can you foil palpate the upper border? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. So then you can say that yeah, does it move with respiration? Uh, no, sir. It, it doesn't move with respiration. Does the liver mass move with respiration? Uh, no, sir. No. No, liver mass moves with the re uh, respiration and in this case, the uh, swelling was also moving with respiration, sir. You did not say that. You just said it's mobile. You didn't say this is moving with respiration. As far as I remember, have you said that? No, sir. So what are the swellings that move with respiration? Sir, any uh, intra-abdominal swelling which not is which is not fixed to the uh, underlying structure uh, uh, and retro retro swellings uh, does not move with the. Uh... No, 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 no. 
Don't make kidney a blank comment. Kidney does not move with respiration. Yes, sir. Kidney. What about the kidney? Yes, kidney do move with respiration, sir. No, no. Kidney when is enlarged and reaching up to the diaphragm only. Then only there will be some movement. Otherwise, a, a normal kidney does not move with respiration. Uh, but I think, Behrul, the way we describe the lump and palpation, uh, some uh, clinical examiner might explain in a different way. If I tell you, go back to the slide first. Yes, sir. Pal pal palpation. Palpation. First slide. Yes. This is yes. When you start palpating, you first confirm, yes. sir, this is an intra-abdominal swelling. Ascertained by rising test, number one. Yes, sir. Leg rising test. Next, yes, you describe, once you say intra-abdominal swelling, then yes. you describe the shape and size of the swelling. And then yes. you describe the surface. You have said margins regularly is not important. Important is whether you can palpate all the margins. Because yes. as Dr. Ghosh asked you, if it is a liver mass, you will not be able to palpate permanently. Margins regularly means I am not clear about what margins you are talking of. So if you say all the swelling is palpable and all the margins are palpable, Yes, sir. Not like you or you can insinuate your hand yes, between the costal arch as well. Yes, sir. And then if you say patient is intraabdominal lung <coughs> ascertained by rising test, there is no question of commenting is fixed to the skin. It's very unlikely. But even you are doing a rising test and saying that intraabdominal swelling the abdomen become taut, then you can fix to the skin. Why to be fixed to the skin unless a very advanced disease. Okay. Yes. yes so yes. next is I said next slide. Right? Next. Yes. Sir. So try to give a good description of the lump you are uh, describing. Next. So two or three very important things you have missed. One is like sir pointed out rightly. You have to mention yes. that it is intra-abdominal yes. first. Once it yes. is intra-abdominal, you should also say this is it's most likely intraperitoneal, not retroperitoneal. Secondly, yes. whether it is moving with respiration or not, and whether the upper limit can be if for an upper abdominal swelling, whether the upper limit can be reached for a lower yes. abdominal swelling, where the lower limit can be reached. These are important things that you have to mention. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. And, and here comes a parietal examination also. You see, you cannot skip. Yes, you sir. cannot skip the parietal examination. What, what you may expect in a CS stomach on parietal examination. Sir, uh, bloomer self. Uh, what, if is, what, is is what is that? Sir, uh, deposit in the pouch of Douglas. Metastatic deposit in the pouch of so Douglas. What do you feel in the finger? What do you feel in finger? As you put sir, your finger in the rectum, what yes, finding you will tell yes, there is a bloomer self. Sir, uh, transfers reaches in the anterior wall of the rectum. Yes. So, there will be shelf-like projection yes, sir. in the anterior wall of the rectum. How does yes, the gastric mass go? And the you'll find that is a... Sorry, sir? How does the gastric swelling go to the pouch of Douglas? No, sir, due to a trans spread. What are the methods of spread of gastric cancer? What are the possible ways that which by which gastric cancer can spread? Sir, uh, hematogenous. Hmm. It's a general question. Yes, no, sir. Before uh, that, don't study the hematogenous. You ask spread. First, talk of the local. Local. Uh, local spread by uh, di direct spread can occur. Direct invasion. Direct infection, yes. hematogenous, yes. Hmm. Transform. Uh, lymphatic, uh, lymphatic spread, and transcellomic spread. How about implantation? Sorry, sir? Implantation? Implant, yes, sir, that is transcellomic spread. That is also possible. Uh, yeah. yes, transcellomic and plus during surgery. Okay. Yes, sir. Be careful. You have to use a closed technique. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fine. So, all five methods are known. Yes, sir. Then? Okay. You can go to the uh, summary, I think. What is Sister Marie Joseph's nodule? Sir, uh, metastatic deposits in the uh, in the umbilicus is called the Sister Marie Joseph's nodule. Mm -hmm. Okay. So nothing contributed in the systemic exam, right? Uh, go on to summary. Yes, sir. A 57-year-old gentleman present. Uh, presented with complaint of pain abdomen since last six months and vomiting since last four months. He also complains of fullness uh, of uh, fullness after meals and weight loss for last four months. The sensation of fullness after meals is 
meal is more towards the evening and complaints of vomiting for last 6 months occurring almost daily for last 4 months since last uh, since last 4 months vomiting is occurring after every meal and vomiting is projectile projectile in nature and contains food material taken more How than he is mentioning in the summary he has mentioned taken more than 12 hours earlier okay fine good yes sir no history of hematemesis or malina or a fresh bleeding per rectum there is uh, 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 there is a complaints or there is a present of complaint of loss of appetite and significant weight loss for last four months there is no history of peptic ulcer disease in the past on phys uh, physical examination on uh, general survey patient nutrition is poor mild pallor was present there is no cervical nephropathy mild dehydration was present on local examination of the abdomen abdomen is normal in shape with fullness in upper abdomen and amblyx is present at the normal site and is normally inverted visible peristalsis is seen in the upper abdomen distend and the uh, distend stomach is palpable in the left hydro hypochondrium region and pubic region below uh, this below not, the amblyx this is not consistent with your uh, description so you say it is 3 into 3 cm if it is 3 3 cm it is here here is the lump again yeah you are also using no it is kept the next part even there it is 3 into 3 <laughs> 3 cm mass cannot go from the left hypochondrium to epigastric region it is difficult now this is he is describing sometime when the stomach is full you can feel yes. the distended stomach which disappears you have to mention that line the yes, palpable stomach is disappearing under the palpating finger that yes, is the distended gastric stomach the visible yes. peristaltic part which has palpated next describe the lump part first yes, sir. Ah, uh, lump is palpable in the pelvic region. Summary should be right. more precise. You see, summary cannot be so much uh, so three four slides. Not so extensive. Yeah, so summary should be more precise. Okay, so okay. okay. So instead of saying no other lump is, there is a solitary lump. That is all. If it is a solitary lump, it means no other lump is palpable. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, uh, lump is palpable. Reverse spleen, no other lump. All these lines you can do away with. This is summary. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, normal bow. Yes, sir. Uh, normal bowel sounds are audible. Succussion splash is present. This is not really important. No? All these things. Succussion splash is important. Is fine. Normal bowel sound. This is summary. Only positive points and important negative points. Yes, sir. Rectal examination normal. Okay, fine. So at the end of this, what is your clinical diagnosis? Sir, it is a case of a gastric outer obstructive disease, most likely due to carcinoma of the stomach. Okay, so this seems to be a fairly classical uh, presentation. It is difficult to come up with too many degrees. So now you can say it is a case of gastric outer obstruction due to carcinoma stomach. But just at the end of history, with upper abdominal pain and weight loss and vomiting, don't say it is carcinoma stomach. You say there are yes. three or four possibilities. Now let him justify. Huh. Let him justify the diagnosis. Okay. Why do you say carcinoma outer obstruction and, and why do you say it's gastric stomach? <laughs> sir uh, first of all <coughs> it is a old patient with history and with uh, having a, a old patient with history of weight loss also uh, history of history of weight loss how about gender male versus female is there any significance sir uh, male is uh, much more, means in not much but slightly more common in males yes so male, it is yes. with history of with history of uh, there is also present of history of uh, occasional alcohol smoking and the patient also patient also complains of uh, history, uh, uh, vomiting after meals with uh, also there is history of uh, reduced appetite and weight loss is also present and burning so, pain and burning pain after the age of 40 so new onset dyspepsia after 40 so mm -hmm. you have to think of upper uh, yeah. gi problems duration like duration yes, of outside and, so that and is a important point in favor of diagnosis of malignancy Yes, sir. Only that the duration is only of six months. Mm. Yeah. Yes, sir. Fairly short history, right? Not for yes, years. Sir. It is not there for years. Yes, sir. So you do all all this scenarios. It can be a case of uh, gastric outlet obstructive disease. Yes. So yes, what is your next step? Okay, you said patient has got poor nutrition. You said patient has poor nutrition. How have you assessed nutrition in this patient? What are the things you have looked for? Sorry, sir. Apart from nutrition, the... how do you assess nutrition? Apart from him as poor nutrition. Sir, we have to look for the general body condition of the general uh, well-being of the general body condition of the patient with the uh, general. Uh, you mean general appearance? Whether he is yes, emaciated or not, whether yes, eyes are sunken, whether he got skin bone appearance or not, that is on general appearance. What else? Yes. And after that, we have to look for the uh, mid mid upper arm circum circumference. And the skin fold thickness has Only to be. Look for that. Why, why, why the arm circumference is measuring? What the arm circumference is measuring? 
to look for the per uh, percentage of the uh, body uh, fat and the muscle bulk muscle this bulk muscle bulk muscle, muscle, muscle and before bulk. that do you do you pinch the skin pinch the skin yes sir do you so pinch, you pinch skin the skin? skin yes sir skin fold thickness what do you look for there sir dehydration present or not present no 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 before dehydration nutrition i asked nutrition Sir is saying when you measure the whole circumference, what exactly are you looking for? And when you measure the skin fold thickness, what are you looking for? Sir, uh, when we measure the whole circumference, we are looking for the muscle bulk. Mainly muscle bulk, yes. And, and when we are uh, doing uh, measuring the skin fold thickness, we look for the percentage of the body fat. Subcutaneous fat, loss of subcutaneous fat. Yes, okay. sir. Yes. What is loss of muscle known as? This diminishing muscle bulk is known as? Sarko? So, sorry, sir. Diminishing muscle bulk due to malnutrition is known as? Wasting. Medical term. Wasting is a general term. But wasting is non-specific for everything, not just muscle. Sir has given you a hint. Sarcopenia. Sarcopenia. That is very, very important. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sarcopenia. Go on. Then. What, what other things you look for? Other, other, other nutritional deficiency can be seen in the tongue. Lip. In the in the tongue, in the lip, at the angle, of, at the for the micro. What? What? what are you looking for? Protein. What? what do you look for? No, no, sir. In the eyes. Carbohydrate. In the, no, sir. In the eye, in the lower palpebral uh, conjunctiva, we have to look for the anemia is present or not present. Okay. And, and in the under, uh, and uh, also in the tongue and in the mucosa in the. Mucosa. Anemia. Anything else? Yes, These sir. These are for micronutrient deficiency. <laughs> Try to understand. A yes, nutritional sir. assessment is a global assessment. Global yes, assessment for BMI as a whole, the body weight, the yes. uh, muscle bulk, skin yes, full sir. thickness, micronutrient yes, in the form of glossitis, chilitis, yes, anemia, 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 all these night things. blindness. Okay. Yes, yes sir. Zerophthalmia. So, so many things. It will be very clear. You see, some exam might be very clinically oriented. Mm. Uh, he can yes, stuck you even in the nutrient assessment. So you should yes. be very clear about how to assess nutrition in a uh, malignant patient. Okay, fine. Yes. Yes. So what are you going to do? Not too much of time. Hurry up. Yeah. Fifteen minutes. Ah, uh, uh, I will first confirm my. Uh, I will first do an in investigation to confirm my diagnosis. What investigation? For, for that, I have to do a, a upper GI endoscopy and biopsy from the lesion has to be rigid, done. Rigid, rigid endoscopy or flexible endoscopy. Sir, a flexible endoscopy has to be done. Flexible upper GI endoscopy, okay. Yes, sir. And after that, uh, after confirming the disease, I have to so do this. No, no, no. What information will the... How many biopsies are important? Sir, uh, at least 10 biopsies has to be, uh, 10 biopsy has to be taken from the every quad, uh, from the every quadrant. From all four quadrants. From all four yes, quadrants. Yes. yes, sir. So, the, what are the things that you are looking for in upper GI endoscopy? Sir, in upper GI scopy, the uh, the size of the lesion, the first of all, there is a lesion or no? Yes, sir. There is a lesion oh, present or not? It's a clinical diagnosis, isn't it? You may be wrong. There may be yes, extensive compression. You said it could be lymphoma. Then yes, there may sir. not be any mucosal lesion. Yes, sir. So first of all, confirm that yes, there is a lesion. Yes, sir. Next, number, position, size, no. all three things. Whether there are multiple symptoms, <laughs> whether there is it is proximal or distal. The, yes, sir. Location. Yes. Yes, sir. Then, after that, we have to uh, uh, invest, investigate has to be done to state oh, no. that it... endoscopy. Then, no, no. can pass the why can you then pass the uh, pass the scope beyond the obstruction or not? Uh, yes, sir. Pass the scope beyond the stomach or not? Be exactly. Beyond the duodenum or not? Enter the duodenum or not? Then anything else? Still an endoscopy. Nothing else. Endoscopy. More information. Have you heard of Borman's classification? Yes, a Bowman's classification so is what for. What is that based on? Is that based uh, on histopathology? No, sir. Uh, on uh, based on a uh, gross morphology, it? right? Gross, gross yes, morphology. Gross, so how yes. can you see gross morphology? Can you see inside the stomach? The endoscopist yes, will tell you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So is that important or not? Yes, sir. That is important, sir. To look for the, it's a uh, early carcinoma or uh, advanced carcinoma. Uh, we are assuming that this is advanced, but even in advanced, uh, there is for early gastric cancer, there is another classification. What is that? Jap the Japanese classification, sir. Uh, so that is purely endoscopy, right? Yes, <laughs> yes, sir. In this case, we assume that it cannot be a, tie, a stage one T one lesion. So yes, this is definitely advanced, but even in advanced, there is a significance. A linitis plastica, which is yes, a stage, a stage, a stage four. 
and uh, yes, state governments uh, type 1 they are not the yes. same the yes, process is not the same the treatment is not the same so yes sir try to get that information from upper gi endoscopy yes sir okay. yes sir. yes sir. okay then so upper gi endoscopy done there is a say there is a circumferential ulcerative proliferative lesion in the distal antrum and pylorus and the channel is totally obstructed the, the gi medical gi person says that i could not negotiate the scope into the duodenum biopsy was taken there was a lot of food residue inside the stomach huh? yes sir it was emptied out now what biopsy is taken assuming biopsy is come seven days later patient comes to you with a biopsy moderately differentiated adenocarcinoma or yes sir differentiated yes sir then so uh, and after that we have to stage the disease for staging the disease we have to do a cct cct chest and cct abdomen has to be done whole abdomen either say abdomen and pelvis or space say whole abdomen at least say yes, whole sir. abdomen yes sir uh, Uh, C C C C T whole abdomen and pelvis and C C T chest to look for the metastasis and the uh, localized growth of the disease has to be okay. yes sir suppose it is an early lesion anything else that you can do not in this case this is obviously an advanced lesion suppose it is an early lesion sir we have to done for the endoscopy done for peptic ulcer like symptoms the patient had symptoms that six months ago he had it and within a week he went to a doctor <laughs> all ulcer detected. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What can so, we, we can in uh, the early carcinoma can, stomach? We can, we can help in management also. We can do a uh, endoscopic ultrasound. Uh, yeah. So you must mention in today's world endoscopic ultrasound. Not for this patient. For this patient, it may not be so important. But for early, at least for writing in theory, don't forget EUS. But if you don't practice saying it, you will forget. Yes. Why? How is EUS important? Sir, uh, uh, it is done to look for the. Uh, Uh, invasion at the on the uh, on the stomach plate. Very specific with your answer. Can the CT scan tell you T one versus T two? No, sir. Can the EUS tell you T one versus T two? Yes, sir. How is it important? Sir, uh, if it's a T one lesion, we can do endoscopic local. So it is scan. important, right? Acha. Yes. Can the CT scan tell you T two versus more than T two? Yes, sir. CT scan can tell. Okay. T two or T yes, three, it can distinguish. No, oh, sir. T T three and T four, sir. Uh, T four definitely CT scan can distinguish, but T two and T three. No, sir. T two and T three can't. Yes, can EUS do it? Yes, sir. Yes. Why is it important, sir? Uh, to pre prescribe the new adjuvant chemotherapy. So then, this is important. So then, yes, sir. Important. But don't forget EUS. You must mention yes, EUS. So all these things. T one versus more than T one. Endoscopic management is possible. T two versus more than T two. New adjuvant versus upfront surgery. So these are important things. Yes, sir. Okay. But in this case, possibly, obviously, it is going to be more than T two. A T two lesion will generally not cause so much of symptoms. Then go yes. on. So, upper GI endoscopy done, biopsy done, CT scan done. CT scan does not show any metastasis to the liver. There is no ascites. There is no other deposit in the uh, non-regional nodes. But there are a few perigastric lymph nodes enlarged, and obviously, there is a big mass. The planes with the pancreas are somewhat obscured in one or two places. Focally. There is obscuring of plane between the pancreas and the growth. Any other information that you want? Sir, a liver deposit present. I said there liver. is nothing in the liver. So uh, the CT thorax is normal. Now what? Sir, we have to prescribe three cycles of new adjuvant chemotherapy to down. How about the dehydration and the symptoms of the patient? Patient cannot eat. Patient is losing weight. Yes. Patient is vomiting after yeah, every meal. Obstruction. Sir, we have to first. Patient is anemic. Yeah, we have to first optimize the general condition and the uh, nutrition building has to be done for the patient. After that, uh, and nutrition building can be done by uh, uh, in this patient. Uh, to total parental nutrition can be prescribed. And so, when you are prescribing total parental nutrition or partial parental nutrition, would you like to know the baseline status of the patient? Yes, sir. Baseline, you have to look so for. So, how will you know that? By doing investigation like. Uh, uh, Yeah. Serum sodium potassium. Yeah, you have to do a complete investigation. Hemogram. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, 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 what are the diselectrolyte? Uh, the electrolytes. There's so what many are, things. Sorry, sir. What are the electrolyte changes that you are expecting in this patient? So, in this patient, there will be uh, hyponatremia, hypochloremia, and there will be hypokalemia. Most likely, hypokalemia also. Uh, Correct. And uh, acid base. Acid base. Uh, uh, there will be metabolic alkalosis, sir. Yes. With 
with para, with paradoxical uh, acid add, don't wait just say yeah. with paradoxical acid because invariably examiner will ask you if you stop at metabolic alkalosis why is he developing metabolic alkalosis sir due due to loss of uh, uh, hydrogen ions from due to, due to vomiting where is the hydrogen ion coming from sir due to uh, uh, hcl hcl how yeah. hcl is secreted by parietal parietal and oxidative cells secrete uh, hcl sir okay what are the other cells in the gastric mucosa lining uh, parietal oxidative cells and you said that uh, what are the other cells uh, what else are secreted in the stomach juice apart from acid uh, sir a mucus and... okay mucus are some some goblet cells are there what else Stomach also secretes some enzymes. That yes, you understand, sir. which are not yes, excreted sir. in the stomach. Yes, sir. And uh, uh, pepsin hormones. Yes, sir. Gastrin is secreted in the. Uh... You say these things. Huh? Yes, this, as a postgraduate student, this is not a difficult question, especially if yes, you answer sir. with what are the different type of cells in the mucosa of the stomach. You have to answer that. Okay, fine. So uh, you are going to stabilize the patient. You are going to correct the dehydration. You are going... so how are you going to correct the dyslipidemia? Sir, hypoglycemia, hypokalemia, hypochloremia. Uh, first, we have to uh, give uh, normal saline to the patient, and Why after the ringers lactate. Ringers lactate is more physiological. Now, in this case, as there is a loss of uh, uh, chloride ions, and uh, so normal saline contains much more of uh, amount of chlor how chloride. More? How much more? Let's hear. Sir. Uh, in uh, ringer ringer lactate, there is a one twenty one milliequivalent, while in uh, sodium. No, 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 I don't think it's one twenty one. It is around one thirty five, one thirty one, one thirty one, or something. One thirty one. Sodium. In ringer, sodium is one thirty. In normal saline, sodium is one fifty four. Fifty four, one fifty four, sir. Chloride is less. So it's Chloride not such a big in... difference. Hundred thirty and hundred fifty. It's not such a big difference. But we can give slowly ringer. We don't want to. The correct point is, why not give ringer lactate? Try to understand the question. Why not giving ringer lactate? Why are not giving ringer lactate? Uh, it contains bicarbonate. No, 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 lactate doesn't contain bicarbonate. Lactate contains no, lactate only. Yes, sir. What lactate happens to the lactate in the body? Yes, sir. The lactate will cause the lactate in the body. Lactate in the liver is converted to bicarbonate. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that so will aggravate what? Uh, metabolic uh, alkalosis. Right. So that is why you don't yes. give ringer lactate. It's not because that ringer lactate doesn't have any sodium. The sodium yes. deficiency could have been yes. corrected by giving ringer lactate also, but yes, sir. because you don't want to worsen the alkalosis, that yes, you sir. don't give ringer lactate. Your concept should be clear, okay? Yes, Not sir. because it has less sodium. Yes, sir. Because it is also true that you know, sodium chloride has more sodium and more chloride, so that is even better in that way because here we are dealing with that problem. But remember this point that basically yes, we are not giving ringer lactate not to worsen the existing <laughs> alkalosis. Yes, sir. Okay, so you have stabilized. Now you are giving chemotherapy. Do you, uh, what, what is the evidence for that? Why are you giving? You are giving chemotherapy. I Sorry. say I can remove it. I can remove it. What is the problem? I said there are perigastric nodes. There is a gastric growth. There is a focal uh, invasion in the pancreas. You ask sir. Sir has removed many times. She has shaved the pancreas off. A little bit of the pancreas he has shaved off. Why no, am sir, I giving? You are giving chemo. No, sir, the magic trial has. Uh, concluded okay. What is that? Survival advantage in magic trial? Sir, uh, it is uh, more in cases of patients who have received received. How much? How much? What is the percentage at improvement in magic trial? Is there a overall survival advantage or not? First of all, see me. Is it just disease-free survival advantage or overall survival advantage? No, overall survival. survival. Overall survival advantage has been shown. Correct. How much? Mm. Around five percent. Okay. So yes, yes so you have evidence for that. This is level one evidence. It's a randomized trial which has shown benefit. Yes. In overall survival, so we must give neoadjuvant chemo. So you have given three cycles of chemo. Do you can you name the drugs that will be used in magic? Yes, sir. Uh, Cisplatin, uh, epirubicin, and five fluoro. Very good, very good, fantastic. Yes. So you have given three cycles, and then how will you reassess? Sir, after uh, with uh, PET scan has to be done and or CT. Yes, that means that you have to do PET scan. You can again restage by CT scan thorax. Yes, yes, Before sir. giving the chemo, anything else that you need to do? So serum CA has to be done. Oh, that is not so important. Something very important which you have to do. The surgeon has to do. Sir, yeah, feeding, feeding genus. Feeding or bleeding? No, no. Feeding or bleeding. They don't do jump for gastroenteritis. Staging laparoscopy. 
yes sir sorry sir staging life pro laparoscopy once you give the chemo that prognostic information will be lost yes sir before that you have to stage it yes sir okay so you have given chemo and now there is a good response post chemo pet you can do a pet ct scan you can do a ct scan and the perigastric nodes are gone the gastric mass there is no perigastric stranding the pains with the pancreas are clear what now so we can prove so. growth, but the growth is still the thickening irregular asymmetric thickening of that pylorus and the antrum antrum and pylorus yes sir we can go for a d2 a formal d2 gastrectomy in this patient subtotal gastrectomy with d2 <laughs> lymphadenectomy don't say d2 gastrectomy d2 is lymphadenectomy gastrectomy yes, you have to describe in gastrectomy term distal subtotal total so yes, why sir. not total why what is the what is the proximal margin that you are aiming for sir in 5 to 6 cm proximal margin has to be all cases Now, in early gastric carcinoma, we can take a two. No, no, not early. Even in this case, say it's an advanced gastric cancer. It's at least T two or more than T two, T three. Mm. Post chemo, this is why C T three or yes, why T two at least. Any originally it was T three. Now it is why C T two. Yes, sir. Not early. It is still not early. Yes, sir. Then, at least then five to six centimeter has to be taken. In all cases, what guideline is this? Mm. So NCCN says five centimeters proximal margin, but there are other guidelines also. You know, there is a Japanese guideline. Japanese people do a lot of stomach surgery. So they say, based on the morphology of the patient, in all yes. cases you may not need a five centimeter margin. Huh? Yes, sir. Yes. Well differentiated and exophytic lesion, then three centimeter proximal margin. margin. If it is an infiltrative lesion, then five centimeter margin. Okay. Yes, sir. So yes, this sir. is why the morphology on upper GI endoscopy is important. Yes, sir. Okay. So you and what about the distal margin? Sir, distal margin should be two centimeter beyond the pyloric end. You should try for two centimeters, but sometimes it may not be possible. If it is less than that, what can you do? Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Suppose you are not getting two centimeter margin, you can you can getting maybe one centimeter margin, a little more than one centimeter. Can you do something else to confirm that I am okay, or do you have to well, end up doing a whipples? No, sir. Frozen section has to. Yes. Yeah, so whenever your margins are less than optimal. It is yes, not practical to take more than that, but yes. you think you have got free margin. In that case, you can confirm by doing frozen section. And if yes, it is sir. negative, then your even your suboptimal margins are okay. okay. Yes, sir. Yes, Good. sir. Fine. What about D two lymphadenectomy? Why? Why do you want to do D two, not D one? D one. There is no nodes now on CT scan. No sir, there can uh, histologically the presence of nodes can be there, and at least fifteen nodes has to be taken, sir. What is the evidence on that? The fifteen, the, the, you can remove the entire body's nodes. There are eight hundred nodes in the body. You can remove them. Why will you remove them? What is the evidence? So because spread first occurs in the lymph nodes. Are but is there any level one evidence for that or not? I say I will treat it. Why, why fifteen nodes is taken as a standard of? Uh... nodal staging just like nodal you said staging. i will give chemotherapy because magic trial has shown an advantage now yes, i am asking you, you why will you do d2 lymphadenectomy is there a trial which has shown an advantage or not sir so the agc uh, according to the agc guideline yes but the guideline is based on some evidence isn't it yes sir is do you know any evidence for d2 versus d1 that is important you are a surgeon You are saying ECF or magic trial, but you are not giving me the evidence for D two versus D one. Strange fascination for. So what is the What is the recommendation? D one is recommendation, or in any patient, you should do D two. So D two is recommendation, sir. So why? What is the evidence for that? Um, sorry, sir. The Dutch trial, the MR British MRC trial, the Dutch trial, which compared D one versus D two. And saw that there was disease-free survival advantage. Yes, sir. You have to know about these things. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What are the D two stations? Can you move? Sorry, sir. What are the D two stations? Sir, D two is mainly the uh, arterial supply uh, to the. Are they quickly? Quickly, tell me the stations. The time is over nearly. Limb stations. Le sir, uh, D two is uh, left gastric. Uh, common hepatic left gastric is now one to seven is part of D one, you know. Left gastric number seven yes. is part of D one now in the latest classification. It should be D one plus this. You try yes. to understand what you are yes, talking sir. of. D one plus D this. So after yes, seven, what is there? 
After left gastric, what is there? Common hepatic, same. Okay. Then, then? Uh, splen uh, splenic hilum, splenic artery. Okay, so that is up to 11. Splenic yes, hilum sir. is uh, 10, splenic artery is 11. Yes, so sir. Proximal and a distal? Sorry, sir. Proximal and distal? Proximal and distal. 11 P, 11 D. You are a postgraduate trainee. You should know in a little more details. What is 12? After that, what is there? D2 is not up to 11. There is something more. Yes, what is H2L? What station is that? 12A. Yes, sir. Okay, so you have to say these things. Suppose the infrapyloric nodes are positive. Yes, sir. Then anything else you have to remove? Infrapyloric. It's infra level 6 improved infrapyloric. So if 6 is positive, station 6, is there anything more you have to do for D2? Well, it's a standard D2. You have to remove station 14 also in that case. Okay. When will yes. you remove the spleen? Sir, uh, if it's a positive in cases of uh, level 10 and 11 with involvement of spleen, di direct invasion to spleen or in so radical... Say direct invasion of spleen or very bulky nodes in the hilum. What? Uh, even generally you can free, but if it's in the hilum region and you cannot dissect it off without injuring the vessel, then you may have to do a splenectomy. What are yes, the precautions sir. that you will take if you have to do a splenectomy on CT scan if you are thinking that uh, these things are present? Sir, we have to give uh, uh, vaccines, pneumococcal uh, vaccine. Okay, okay, fine. So now you have done a say, subtotal yes, gastrectomy. Yes. What What next? Reconstruction. Yes, sir. Uh, we can do a Bilroth 2 gastrogenostomy. You can. Anything else? Or, or do and why gastrogenostomy can also be done, sir. Which one will you do? Sir, uh, in my hospital, mainly, sir, uh, bill of type 2 gastrogenostomy has been done. Okay. You don't like to do a Rua Vai. What is the problem with bill of 2 in a subtotal where a lot of stomach has been removed? What is sir, the problem with uh, bill of 2? Sir, uh, there will be a dumping syndrome if a uh, lot of stomach will be removed. Afferent loop, uh, afferent loop is, uh, is a long afferent loop. No, because bill of you are taking the jejunama. Yes, sir. The jejunama can only go from DJ. And yes, uh, you have removed a lot of stomach. This is not a distal gastrectomy. This is a subtotal gastrectomy. So you have yes, to sir. get up high. So there is a long afferent loop. And that yes, can lead to afferent loop syndrome. So what can you do for that? Uh, at least 50 centimeter, 50 centimeter of the uh, uh, proximal. What is the classical the... method of describing a gastrogenous, ideal gastrogenous tummy? Uh, How should the loop be? Sir, uh, rule loop should be at least 50 centimeters. Don't, do, don't bring rule. We are talking about Bilroth 2. Not rule. You have done Bilroth 2. You just said we do Bilroth 2. Suppose you are doing a Bilroth 2 gastrogenostomy. What is the ideal description of a gastrogenostomy in the olden days when they used to do it for peptic ulcer? Side Posterior, retrocolic, <laughs> yes, isoperistaltic, vertical, minimum limb, no tension. Yes, sir. I'm still remembering it. You're not remembering. Posterior means what? What does posterior mean? Sir, the anastomosis is done in the posterior uh, layer of the stomach. Posterior wall. Posterior wall. Posterior wall, posterior ah. wall of the stomach. Posterior yes, isoperistaltic. Means uh, the uh, uh, means the uh, the limb is in continuity with the uh, normal plus. The, uh, the afferent limb movement. is towards the lesser curvature. Afferent limb and is towards the greater curvature. This is not important. You know there are studies which have shown anti-peristaltic, isoperistaltic. Those are almost same. Then vertical, then minimal loop. So I was talking about loop. The loop, the afferent loop should be minimal. But if you have done a subtotal gastrectomy, you cannot make it minimal. You have to take it up to the stomach. So then yes, can you do anything else to reduce this length? Or do you reduce the stasis in this length? You cannot do anything to reduce the length. The length is there. Now, there is stasis in this afferent limb. Can you do something to reduce the stasis in the apparent afferent limb? What is Brown's procedure? Brown's procedure? Jejuno jejunostomy. You add a jejuno jejunostomy to the gastro jejunostomy. In yes. that case, the, the food which is getting say, the bile secretion or the pancreatic secretion, which is having a stasis in the afferent limb, will pass through the jejuno jejunostomy. Instead okay, of Dr. we have to go to hospital. Okay, we have sir. to go to the hospital. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we, we can take the for a one round scenario and discuss the remaining part. Okay, okay. no problem. Fine. Yes, okay. Fine. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
nicely presented. Good. Any comment? Okay, thanks. Dr. Boshak. He has said thanks. He has written ah. thanks. He is up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Thanks. Good morning. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Boy. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.